Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another fantastic episode of the Boston Greeks podcast. We have an amazing show tonight. Uh, you know, in my eyes, this is like of the highest caliber that you could go because this guy is legendary. This guy is part of history. This guy has so much to do with my upbringing on the Greek scene in Boston. Uh, before we get to him, let me introduce my co-host, my favorite guy, Foti Stamos. What's up, Foti? Yeah, so Ari, and since you introduced me, I'll introduce you, Ari Kalos. Hello. <laughs> so, um, Foti, tell us, tell us what's going on tonight. I'm, well, I'm super excited about this. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, we've been used to being in lockdown, and finally we got to lock down this guest tonight. Busy guy, <laughs> right? Uh, but... You said legendary, but also we want to uh, also make the point that we worked side by side with this individual. We've created many events, good memories. Um, he was also a big part of the scene in Boston when it came to Greek nights, Greek events, Greek concerts, festivals, you name it. Uh, we brought a lot mixes, of mixes, mixes. Oh, my and, God. And remixes. And, you know, truth be told, you know, we've had plenty of great artists. This individual also, in my opinion, is one of the greatest artists who comes from the local scene. With us tonight, DJ Thrilla. Yeah, Thrilla, yeah, thank you so on, much for on, joining on, us. There it is. <laughs> All right, I just had to do it. I had my equipment set up here. So thanks for having it. me, guys. I, I uh, appreciate the intro. I know I work with you guys in different capacities over the years. You've always been very supportive. Um, whether I was at we're at the club or a concert or even just DJing like a festival or a wedding or something, I always it's always been uh, nice to see you guys and I always feel confident uh, when you guys were at events too. So it, it's funny, uh, Arthur, that you know when we when we do these like formal introductions, it, it's so funny because we literally are all like a big group of friends, but it just happens. That within this big group of friends, there were some like super talented individuals that actually made strides. Like they actually put Boston on the map, yourself being one of them. And, you know, again, I, I just find it so entertaining that we're like introducing you as like so and so and so. But you're our buddy. You're our friend. You're, you're somebody we know. But it just it's one of those crazy things. It was just a perfect storm that when we came out that like all these talented individuals were all together. I mean, yeah, I mean, we we came we we came and and, uh, and put our um, our spin on the scene. It, it was one thing before we got there, and then once once we got on the scene, I think we almost transformed it and like and and, and made it not only you know what's going on in Boston, but we almost made it a global thing where people were knowing about us, you know, all around all all in the United States and, and around the world. I mean, we were putting out mixes. We weren't only DJing; we were actually like remixing tracks and working with artists in Greece and like making our own music and like playing it in the club, which is like, that's something that wasn't done before, right. um, especially in Boston. So that was like, it, it was those times too. It was like, we, we had, you know, the club scene was, 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 uh, was asked almost for the taking. There was, it was, it was a lot of um, energy and we have a lot of, you know, I think social media was first coming out at that point too. So yeah, we had a, yeah. lot of, a lot of um, timing. Timing was perfect yeah. uh, for, for the whole formula of, being successful and bringing us Greeks together on the Boston scene. But Thrilla, you probably have either been listened to by hundreds and thousands of individuals locally, nationally, globally. You have probably have created the experiences for many weddings and baptisms as well, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So besides that, we want our audience to know you a little bit more. Why don't we start by you telling us where you grew up, a little bit about your childhood as a Greek American and leading up to how music started for you. So, um, you know, I was born and raised here at Lynn, Massachusetts, which if you're not from around the area is like 20 minutes North of Boston. Um, you know, and, and my, you know, immigrant parents, typical story, um, you know, family in the restaurant business. I was, you know, uh, you know, pushed to go get school, go to education. Um, you know, I grew up in, in Lynn, Lynn, which had a sizable Greek community, which, mm -hmm. which obviously is a big factor because of what I'm doing now. You know, we, there's, you know, at one point, maybe there might have been 20,000 Greeks in Lynn. So, I mean, and also not only Greeks, it was a very diverse uh, city itself. You know, we had, a, we had a large, you know, Hispanic population, uh, Caribbeans, 
um, you know, uh, Asian, Arabic, there was always like this, so it was, it was a huge mix of cultures, you know, mm-hmm. um, and that, you know, that, that was, that was, you know, trickled down into the music where it's like, I was not only, you know, listening to Greek music or American music, it was like kind of everything. So a lot of that stuff, um, you know, it influenced me growing up, uh, especially growing up in like that urbanized type of area. Um, so, you know, get to get into music though. Like, I mean, you have to think about it and you guys probably had the same experience growing up. Greek, you went to a lot of functions growing up. You were at a wedding, you were at a baptism, you were at a festival, you were at a concert. Mm -hmm. Like music is like, it's like food and like religion. It's, it's one of the, the, is one of the major parts of our, our, um, Greek, Greek culture. Like there's no doubt about it. So everywhere we went, we, you know, it was all, you know, we we go to like a festival, there'd be a band there, or, or like a wedding, there'd be a band there. And I think, just generationally, while I was you know while I was coming up, it was like all right, that bands were kind of getting phased out. Like there's, there was an emergence of a, of a Greek DJ almost, mm-hmm. and that, that Greek DJ was you know tying into like what was going on with just regular American DJing, where like people were mixing you know like hip hop or like dance records and stuff like that. But now you're mixing Greek records, so you had like this whole culture and especially in Lynn. And I think too, like, I think Lynn, even in Rosendale, there was like that, there was a subculture of like DJing and, and stuff like that. So I kind of grew up with that. I mean, you, you've obviously had Peter Solaris on there. So like, I remember being like 15, 16 years old and you know, the only place you can get Greek music was from like one of his mix CDs, mixtapes mm-hmm. at the time. So like a lot of that was, you know, and that was like, that was liquid gold back then. We didn't have the internet, we didn't have nothing. So like a lot of that stuff influenced me. I, you know, his style of, of actually like make, mixing two greek songs that's that you never would think so i mean even at that time i think there was also a transition in greek music where it's like there was at one point it was my our parents music you know with the kalamatiana and the, and the nishotika you're hearing at, at a, at a vaftisi or or a festival to now late 90s all of a sudden the music is that actually becoming like our music where it's like we're going to greece we're hearing this music we're playing it at the club it's like new upbeat it's 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 modern it's contemporary it's like mixed with like latin and hip-hop beats and like you know and all of a sudden like you know late 90s the music started getting really good and uh i mean so I, like at that point i think you know and that's probably you know i was going clubbing all the time every every week and you know how boston had like so many greek nights you'd go to you know not only greek mm-hmm. nights but like maybe american nights. so i was i was myself I think a lot of that big events was I was like I was a club kid. I was going to the club every 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 day I could. Not only here, I'd go to Canada, I'd go to Montreal, you'd go to like Miami, New York, Greece, New York. I, mean, I went to Ibiza, like you so like that was a lot of my influence growing up. It was like I wanted to go to the club. I remember, I'll tell you right now, one of my, one of the most um inspirational moments of my life, not inspirational, but like life-changing almost is like being like 16, 17 and going to the Roxy. On a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a Christmas or an Easter night, right? <laughs> now, think about this, like, and I, and I thought about why was it so, like, crazy? Not just because it was a club. It's because now I, I live in Lynn where it's like, oh, we have our Greek friends and group of people that you know. We know everybody. Right. We probably did the same thing where you guys grew up. You knew everybody. But then I stepped into this place, and I'm like, wow, all these people are just, just like me. But, like, I don't know them. And they're just, just here just because they're Greek. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, it's like, it was like this other world that I discovered. I'm like, wow, there's a Greek people like me, you know, like I, I always, you know, growing up and you grow up too, like in a community too, like you always want to know where you belong. You're like, all right. So I realized like, this is like where I belong. These people are just like me. And it was almost like, and then like, they listen to this Greek music that I, I might've had on a, on a, on a tape one day and like they're listening to it, singing to it and clapping their hands to it. I'm like, wow. You know? So like, it, it was like a drastic shift from like, what my parents or or their generation was doing from like all right this is this is like now it's like kind of my, my generation of like oh mm-hmm. this is like this and like you know that at that time you had like al chaos was coming out and like you know dinata dinata vinatakis was out mm-hmm. like all, um all these like super songs that like to this day obviously because i think at the age i was um they were they, you know i i love these songs but like at the time like they were really, they really changed the way I looked at Greek music. Uh, Cause you know, before that I was like, all right, I don't want to hear this crap. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like, like, what do you have you this? And you're like dancing in the, in the, in the, in the so field. You're, you know? you're given us, you've given us this timeline of inspiration, impacts, influences. Yeah. So where was that pivotal moment where you started to get on the tables? 
So, so what happened to me is, oh, I, I went, graduated college, you know, and I always had, I, I, would, I remember speaking to all my Greek friends, like, especially like my friend Chris, and, uh, who was also a DJ, uh, El Greco, and I, I would mess with him. I'm like, hey, I'm like, dude, like, we can like merge a Greek song and, a, and an American song, like, you know, like sing like, you know, um, you know, Maria, Maria, and then like mix it in with like Maria Metakitrina. Like, I would like say stupid sh- jokes like that because, you, you know. Doing, so you were doing vocals? No, yeah, right. I was, <laughs> so we were like joking, like drinking, joking. I'm like, imagine that. Like, you know, we always would say like, we're going to come up with a song. It's going to be called The Greeks Come Out at Night. <laughs> come out at... Like, who does joke? Like, so in our heads, like I would be like mixing like American and, and, and Greek music. But um, so I would always have that in the back of my mind. So when I graduated college or I was in college at towards the end, you know, my co- older cousins were DJs. I'd say there was a, a whole DJ culture. I was like, I want to get into like music production. But at the time, music production and DJing is the same thing because it was a technology. You had to do, you had to do both. I mean, all the biggest producers in the world were, you know, Dr. Dre, El Timbo, those, all these guys were all DJs too. So like, it was like <laughs> DJ was like the, the uh, foundation of doing music production. So nice. I ended up going, got my first job out of college. I'm like, oh, I got this extra money. I'm going to go buy some equipment, bought some equipment. I'll be messing around, trying to figure this stuff out. Um, you know, reached out to like Chris and John who were DJing for a long time. My older cousins, they, you know, they would tell me, learn things. You know, I, I, I probably self-taught myself most, most of it. Um, but then it was a pivotal moment. Like I got laid off of my job and I'm like, you know, what the hell's, you know, what am I going to do? So I had all this extra time. So, you know, I had my, took my parents' basement, made it into like the studio. My, my parents are like, what the hell's wrong with you? Like, you went to school. Um, it was just a joke. Like people were like, laughing at me. They're like, no, man, this is what I want to do. They're like, what the hell? So I'm like, at that point, I'm like, I, I had to like figure this stuff out. Cause I'm like, how much time do I have to do this? You know? Right. So I ended up, um, you know, reaching out to like Chris, I used to sit and they used to do production. So I used to go by their studio and just like sit in and like watch them do what they do. Um, you know, and then I, and then I, I was just doing like American stuff and mixing, like making beats and like little remixes. And then at one point I'm like, I want to make a Greek mix CD like they used to do back in the day. At that point, I haven't heard, I hadn't heard one in Boston for a while. Mm-hmm. Like no one, no one was putting them out. I think like I would get like a Nico, Nico would do them back in the day. He'd do like a mix at the club and get like, I want to put one together myself. And I ended up putting one together. And, I, and at that point I had like, I got, I made the CD. It was like 25 of the best songs like you've ever heard in Greek music. Like I took my time, I put it together. I ended up printing it out and started giving them out. I'm like, all right, this is it. I'm gonna give out these CDs. Everyone's gonna know who the hell I am. So I ended up giving them out. People started like, oh, you're a DJ? Why don't you come DJ my, my, my baptism? I'm like, um, oh crap. I'm like, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> so I, you know, I had to teach myself how they, like I had to get, build up a library. Um, and, and from that, from that point on, I was like, I was like, look, I gotta, I gotta focus more on the Greek stuff because this is the people I know. These mm-hmm. are the people that are supporting me. So I ended up, um, you know, just doing the Greek. Then I started getting into the remixes. And at that, at that time, like you go online and you'd find remixes on like forums. So like you'd go on there and like DJs from around the world would put up their remixes. So I wanted to get into doing that stuff like that. Like that's how I knew crazy con from back then from like, he was doing, putting out mixes up there. And then I started doing the mixes. Um, and then, you know, I started like, almost like do the, the guerrilla marketing. I was like, I remember I would call Ari. I'm like, Ari, can you put this on your website? And it'd be like a random remix. <laughs> and like, and like people would start to know me and stuff like that. And then like, you know, all of a sudden it's like, um, you know, um, we went, to like you know you, you go to Greece and like boom I'm like I'm on this I'm on the uh on the beach and like I'm looking at like this mix CD of stuff and oh my remix is on there I'm like what the hell <laughs> nice That's so I'm cool. like I'm like what I'm like what the hell's going on here so like I'm like damn like so like they got online marketing like we ended up working you know so like you know all of a sudden like and then and then I was here people were going going to Greece and like yo I heard your remix on the radio I'm like what are you talking about I'm like yeah that remix you did I'm like like so people so the at the time so djs were picking them up online and just like boom spreading them out so at that point you know I, I, in my end i was like i was like you know i mean oh wow like i must be doing something right i'm like everyone's like listening to this stuff but then like you know how long are you gonna sit in your basement you're like all right i need you know so that, that's when i started actually like djing and as a performer mm-hmm. um well you know you kind of have to go out there and support it and people and you started to be in demand so i was getting calls you know, to do like, you know, random events, festivals and stuff like that. And people started, you know, that's how I I initially got my name out there. 
um you know and then and then all of a sudden i'm, I'm out there and like still learning I'm, I'm in studios like random i learned a lot of my music production stuff i actually learned um there was some um some spanish some dominican kids that i linked up with in lynn and they would kind of doing what i was doing but they were doing they were spanish so i would go to their studio and there was like guys in there like there was actually one of the producers that was they, they were working with and i was in the studio with him he was actually um a producer that just, just worked with jay-z and did like his first reggaeton track with jay-z wow. so like he came back so he was he was in new york came back he was from lynn and he was sitting in the studio we, we had conversations i was like i think i was the only non-hispanic person in there but they didn't care i was just sitting there it was all about the music mm. we were sitting there so i was in in his studio um, you know, I learned like probably 90% of what I know how to do on music production is just by sitting with them. Um, they, they you know, taught their, so learn their software and I, and I, and I would go out there, we would like talk about music and I would, I would let them listen to Greek tracks and they, and I would, it's the Spanish tracks. So it was like a, it was like a good, like little community. Um, so yeah, that was it. I was, so at that point when I was started getting, making the mix CDs, I was out grinding. I was just out giving out CDs. I ended up going to New York, um, and I ended up meeting, um, uh, a producer through somebody his name is yanni papadopoulos right and i was like oh was like, yeah i don't know if you guys knew who he was, was just, papadopoulos i'm like who's this guy i'm talking to him the guy who's a greek american he's greek american producer he produced he wrote the Thelu tetus filus from terzi oh wow he wrote that record and he sold it to and he gave it to them he also wrote like five songs with not just like on that double uh double double uh, cd the um the sun and the moon cd he wrote like five songs on there he worked with like busta rhymes he worked with j-lo they could so i went to the studio with him we ended up doing like doing some work i sat learned from him a little bit but it was like a huge experience actually rest in peace because he did pass away um like five six years ago but like i learned a lot from him so like i was just like ending up out there in the scene like just trying to get my name out there put my word out there and like you know this is Right before social media really hit so i was out there even passing cds i was working with producers so it was, a, it was a huge training ground for me at that time and i was learning for everybody um yeah so that i mean you know i i think the end uh the end justified the means of me being out there probably being in some dangerous situations sometimes you know <laughs> being in like uh, basement no. studios and like the ghetto but like <laughs> but no but 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 arthur i mean it's it's to, to your testament you know it's you know you're your talent has been shown in many different levels of the fact that you're it. You just listen to your stuff, and you can just tell like whatever you're doing, uh, you're doing it right. The mixes are very creative; uh, they resonate with us. Uh, you know, they're memorable. Um, you can't replicate the talent that you have. So, uh, for those that are listening to this episode, you know, if this is your first time coming across DJ Thrilla. You got to listen to his stuff. Um, well, hey, we have we have a bunch of his uh, stuff on the app and the website. But uh, again, Fati, I doubt anybody is coming across the for the first time. So, <laughs> but well, if you haven't got, heard got, these mixes a young yet, audience. So yes, absolutely. Yeah, too. And look, the audience the audience does get younger. You're right. So you almost have to keep. I I also keep myself up to date. So I I think the older you get, the more you tend to like uh fall back to those songs you grew up with and like they were hard and stuff and the new music is not that good i try to stay as uh you know obviously um as up to date as possible but not you know not even with like uh new artists and new songs too like i when i do new mixes i gotta incorporate the new stuff too you know it's very important just because that new audience that's what they want to hear that's literally one area of why i would never be able to be a dj because i'm like the the old cranky guy that just uh hates new music and like ah that's all crap in my yeah. day in my day it was real music so i can never i would never be it. able to keep up you got to think about it i think i i have to, as a dj you got to, I, I have to think about it objectively i'm like all right this is a good song this song is going to be make people dance yeah right yeah. my opinion on the song itself obviously i like i might i might like it most of the time i like it but i have to think objectively and say all right this song is going to be a, be a banger yeah. and people are right gonna like it, yeah know? It's like being a chef. You, you sometimes you you, you serve you, food. You, you, don't eat. you also uh, let's yeah. not forget. Let's mention too, uh, Thriller. You've also done some other great work. You've also worked with the Celtics, correct? Yeah. So uh, a lot of the things I do now is um, I do music production. Um, not so I work with a dance group they call Funk Phenomenon, and they're out of uh, Boston, Everett. Now this they ha they are the junior dancers for the Celtics. So what they do is uh, every year 
let's talk pre-COVID because things have gotten mixed up now, but every year I would do like 10, 15 mixes for them that they would dance to during the timeouts, during the Celtics game. So you'd go to a Celtics game and then timeout comes on, boom, these dancers are in the middle of the dance floor and then my mixes are coming on. Not cool. cool. Yeah, so like people hear them, not only that, they're doing showcases. Um, the same, the funny thing is about these dancers, they're, they're probably the, the um, you know, I'd say the best in Boston, but they're the most known in Boston. They they also da- they're also in like movies and stuff as like extras and like dance like um, ah yeah 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 extras. So like for example, like my wife pointed out too. We were watching that new Ghostbusters movie, the one with um, Melissa McCarthy's in it. It was filmed in Boston. There was a dance scene in it, and we're watching it. And she's like, "Are those the guys that were at the house? Because they would come to my house and like I would mix their music for them." And I'm like, "What the?" Hell? So I I I text the the owner. I'm like, "Are those are they in the movie?" They're like, "Yeah, yeah, they're like they're in the they're in the movie. They're like they're in the scene in the movie." That's so, so cool. Uh, yeah, like I think I, I, the other kid is now the other kid I work with now. He's going to be in a new Whitney. There's a new bio pick about uh, Whitney Houston. He's like in that. And then there's oh, cool. one in for um, he's the one for the new West Side Story. A bunch of the couple of dancers are in there. Oh wow. Yeah. So like I work with them. I do all their music. Like they'll go they'll go tour around the world around the country. Uh, with artists like they open up for them so i'll like i'll produce their music i'll like mix it remix it and stuff like that um cool. so you, cool. you're like you're like all over all over the all over the place here with music from djing remixing production um and also you're responsible for how many weddings well yeah no i do enough weddings every year like um the thing is with, with weddings like I, you know i probably do probably 50 50 most of them are greek weddings most of them are mixed greek weddings um but you know there was a high demand for it at some point and um and i kind of stuck with it um you know it's it, it, it's i'm not at the club anymore so like when you're at the wedding especially the dance portion you know i could sit there i can mix you know i can program a good mix for these people and i think i the different there's a lot there's, there's a bunch of guys doing it um and i know all of them are cool with all of them but i think my the difference with me is, you know, I'm, I have a lot more experience with the music. And I, and I think I put a lot of thought into the music I play. And then just my collection of music that I get, like I'm in some, I'm in a network with the DJs from around the world, like a lot from Greece. I'm not only, I'm using, using their mixes, I'm making mixes. So I'm, uh, the, the music that I play at a wedding is, is, is probably, you know, a little bit, a little bit different than you hear at a run in the mill uh, kind of a guy. So my specialty, for, especially for weddings is like playing, the best music possible, you know, mm-hmm. and that's always been my, my angle for um, doing them. So I, I, I do, I do a lot of word of mouth stuff, um, you know, and you, I've run into you guys a bunch of times at random weddings. Mm-hmm. Oh, you've done, you've done also some of our own uh, family. Yeah, I did, I did, I did, you know, I, uh, and nice to see, you know, even our, our generation is having kids and stuff and weddings and stuff. It's, it's nice to see them that, you know, I remember you guys we were getting, you know, smashed in the club and now we're, <laughs> Now we're having uh, we're having babies. Yes. So excellent. No, this is great. Uh, <laughs> getting smashed at the baptisms. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So, Thriller. Um, what's what's in store for you? What are you doing these days? What's going on now? As far as you know, you you've given us your your history, your timeline of uh, where you started, where you are, uh, and what's what's going on now. Let's well, I mean, I'm still I'm still working with the dance groups and doing with the dance crews. I'm doing a lot of their music. You know, I'm actually doing them now. Um, doing a lot of stuff. I'm putting out a lot of um, mixes and stuff uh, with you guys on my SoundCloud. You guys probably want to visit my SoundCloud. I think you guys will put links to the SoundCloud, which yep. is uh, on. Um, uh, well, we're definitely going to feature all of your music and uh, your mixes right on our own platform. So for those that are listening, they can actually check. And out. whenever whenever we post any of uh, Thriller's mixes, uh, we also link to his SoundCloud. So yeah, so my SoundCloud, it- my SoundCloud is big. I think you know that's that's the trend nowadays. Everybody is on the sound is on SoundCloud. Um, you know, I, I obviously I, I I still do a numerous amount of events. Um, if you go to my website, the djthriller.com, um, I do that. Um, you know, I, I did someone someone's been uh, in my ear about maybe starting a. Uh, a Greek radio station here in Boston. Ooh, um, that sounds interesting. I like that. Uh, yeah, so we'd be uh, you know, <laughs> featuring maybe once a week mixes and and you know. Oh. We need we need we need something that is is kind of like what we're doing with the web and the app, but uh, bring your music into it and just do it as a radio show. What do you guys think? 
I love I think, it. I think there's a few big possibility that would that would I'm work. In. I'm in. Yeah. All right. You know, look, I'll tell you, I have uh, just because of COVID and stuff. I feel like I've been, I've been, uh, I have a lot. I have overflow of good Greek music that people need to hear. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. We'll get but it I, out there. I, you know, not only stuff that I make, but like other stuff that I, I'm hearing from around from around the globe, pretty much. Like nice. remixes, hot remixes, remake uh, song, new Greek songs, and you know, I think Greek music has 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 uh, come a long way and being able to be like you know it's very <clears throat> up tempo and, and a lot of energy and i think we, if we put a show together put a lot of that music in there i think i think people will listen all right we should talk they definitely <laughs> will listen we should talk. we'll do this we're doing this yes that's it so uh you know i, I love listening to you thriller because it, it's like i i just sat back and just listened to you and let the the you know the the visions oh. of the past like flow through my head and it was just an awesome experience just now and um there's one thing there's one thing i want to ask you uh from something i'm curious about but when you guys were putting out um you know that that original greek like hip hop back in the day what what in my opinion, I think Boston was literally like the only place that this stuff was coming out of, or was one of the first places it was coming out of. Is that is that what your experience was? Yeah, so I'll tell you. I'll, actually, I, I'll actually maybe go through my what my experience was with that whole project, that that whole Greek hip hop scene per se. Um, so I'll tell you right now, like what they were, if you looked if you knew, were in the music like I was in the music, there was some small little. There was like New York, like some guys in New York would make like a song. They did a song where it was like they redid like some reggaeton song. Um, it was yeah, I think I know which song that is. Yeah, it was a hip hop group. There was a hip hop artist out of Toronto that was doing some some really um, cool stuff where he was taking Greek beats and rapping over them in English. Um, you know, and there was so there was there was like there was pieces of that here or there, and it was always I think like like the same way that I'm mashing up music, like the same way that I would, that I, that's, that I sat down and I said, I'm going to make, you know, Drake versus Giamos and like mm -hmm. do a track. Like in my head, that was like, the, I'm like, well, that's what I'm going to do. Cause that's what I can do. Cause I, in my head, I want to make something like, like, you know, on a VC and in, in, in little Wayne or something like mash them up. But I think the next level to that was like, let's make our own rap song. Yeah. Um, and so what happened was, so I was out there hustling, doing my remixes and stuff like that. And I got approached by actually um, um, some kids that I knew that from, actually from Rosendale. So I'm in Lynn, these kids from Rosendale, we're like, we're, we're like rivals almost. But one, one guy almost. over there, he's like, yo, he's like, yo, I got this, I got my friend, he raps. And I'm like, well, raps. I'm like, like, what do you mean raps? Like in Greek, I'm like, man, I go. And, and so before this, my experience with Greek rap was like, I never liked it. I never liked listening to it. I thought it was like, when you're in America, <laughs> and you hear American rap music, it's like that's the pure form of it. You hear somebody yeah. in Greek rap, it's like it's weird. It was weird, anyways. <laughs> they approached me like, "Yo, my boy raps," and I'm like, "Well, I'm like, well, uh, I'm like, you take you, you got a, you want to get, you know, somebody can get a studio, we record him, you know, we can make some music." And I was like, "Look, I don't do that right now." And at the time, I wasn't doing that because I was just kind of doing DJing and small productions. I was like, "I was like, let me introduce you to." Um, Chris and John, which was Chris Parayo, which is El Greco and John at the time, they were doing music production. The same guys that I, you know, that that I would I would go by and you know pick up some stuff from. And I was like, oh, I, I brought them there because they were actually doing some recording. And from there is like they all got to, we all got together, kind of formed a little team. They um and uh, we put out a record. We put out like you know that 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 song with Stelio, and it was it was good. It was an underground song. Everybody loved it. We we we. Ari put it on his website. It was like the hugest thing. Like we made it, we did one song and we made it the thing that everybody needs to hear. That's, uh, that's my experience. And yeah. what I, what I want to know is from my point of view, I thought that was the biggest thing ever. Like I was talking to people from other States. I was talking to people from other places. I was talking to people in Greece. Everybody was listening to the song. And I was like, is Boston like the only people doing something? Yeah, like, cool? I, I'll tell you, I I put so I use those same avenues that I had that I was pushing my Greek music with. I use I use because I, I was doing a lot of the marketing. I use those same avenues. I push it out to all the DJs. I push it out to, to you in Boston. Um, I push it out into um to like you know DJs that I knew in, in New York and stuff. So like it, it it took it it went viral 
before. Yeah, I think if, if I to- remember, the, the, and I remember talking to you about this, but this is so long ago that I don't know if I have the numbers right. But if I remember the first week that I posted it on um, the website, if, if I remember correctly, it had like 82,000 downloads yeah, or something that's in a number, week. I, that's the number I, rem- I remember too. In I, a week. Yeah. So I, you, I, I would take that link and I would put it at all these forums all over the world. So like in Greece and in Australia and, and in Canada and like all, all these forums, everybody. So, so I would I push the hell out of this track. I mean, it, it got, it got big. It was being bootlegged everywhere. It was being played at clubs in Greece. Like, so like, so I think we used that momentum. I think we ended up, well, what ended up happening is we ended up dissolving, working with him. Um, it just didn't work out. And then, then Alex came you, that you guys had into you. Alex came along and then like, we were you we were able to use that that momentum that we built there to have to and with you know Alex ended up scoring that 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 um the feature with going through, you know? Yeah, yeah. So like it kind of built on each other. So like we had a little scene, but we made I think we made an impact. But like, that's what I'm talking about. It's like I know I, you would expect New York to do it before us. But that's what I'm saying. Like I, I've been hearing all sorts of stuff from New York, but nothing was on that level. I was hearing stuff from other places. Nothing was on that level. So then I'm thinking, is it just because I'm in Boston that it, it's like this? But it's not. It was everywhere. Uh, yeah. Fast forward. Well, look, and, 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 I, and we, it was like a huge collaborative project. All of us worked on it. It's like 10 people on that track. My voice is in the beginning. If you ever listen to it, I like say like, Lady, oh, yeah, like, put your drinks up. Like, uh, so I'm like, I just, I just repeat. I just repeat that song over and over again. I love that part. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, well, I'll tell you right now. You go online; it's it's like millions of plays on 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 YouTube. I'm not lying; I'm not exaggerating. Well, like, you, yeah, yeah. You, what's what's the name of the track so we can let our audience know? Uh, well, you, you have to look it up. It's called Fuda Kalamatiani, and it's like it's it's like a song which who is doesn't like, know that everybody knows that inspired by um by 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 uh, marijuana, <laughs> which is not I, a big thing. But I was going to say, uh, Thrilla, fa- the, the reason I knew that it was more than just a Boston thing and it was really that big, because fast forward years later, I met my wife and one conversation led to another. And she's like, oh, I know that song. Uh, you got I met uh, Chris and he handed me a CD and we used to play that all summer long. That was yeah, like well, the, the part, of our promotions, part of my promotions. We went down to Florida yeah. to the YAL convention down there. And we passed out 500 CDs. Yeah, but, but that that was that was the same type of things we were doing at the club. Like when I was working with with when I was with Sigma, we were doing Sigma Entertainment. We would do that. We would pa- take out five. We would print out like 300 CDs for the night and just pass them out like yeah. free. Like take the CDs and 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 then within the CD it would be awesome music, but we also would brand ourselves. You know. Yeah, yeah. So it was a huge marketing scene back then and that and those those cds too they were online people were listening to them uh everywhere we, we should do we should do a, an archive of those cds too yeah, yeah i have okay. most of them uh i've talked to chris about see if what he has left i've i've tried to preserve a lot of them like um on <clears> my uh, on my mix cloud so but it's it's um i mean we we were putting out two three cds a year you know like all these all, every event yeah you know? that bunny ball cd People still talk about that forever. Like we do, we would do them every year. But people would look forward to the Bunny Ball CD. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was an era. Those were, those were exciting times, man. Yeah. I look back and it was like it was just, it was just such a cool moment in time. And I'll tell you. So when I when I first started, I remember I was I, I was making Greek mix CDs, and I was like, I got to get these to the promoters in Boston because obviously I was going to clubs at the time. I knew everybody because I was a patron. But I was like, I want to get these to the people, to like to promoters, and I knew them. So uh, I went out. I would give one to like to Manos and like Frankie, like at the time I think it was anybody, anybody, anybody that was in the Greek scene. I would give the CDs to, and um, I probably gave one to Forty and you guys. And the only guy that ever got back to me was Spiro <laughs> from uh, from Sigma. He's like, dude, this is a dope CD. We got to do something. And I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, uh, I'm like, yeah, man. I go, I'm just, I just started getting into it. He goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, so I. You know, years later, I ended up we ended up working together, and I was doing the uh, when we were doing the nights together. But he was the only one that like actually was like took me like took me serious because it was, it was like out of nowhere. Out of oh nowhere. yeah, he he had a good air too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I'll tell you right now. Speaking of Greek hip hop and, and Greek music in Boston, he was a good artist, and no one I don't know if a lot of people knew it, but he went under the name Nesso, 
And after we did work with Stelio and then after work, we worked with a Alex, we worked with Nestle and he was putting out some really good music. Um, yeah. And uh, he was very talented. I remember, and I still have a lot of his songs. Like, so we had like that little scene going. There was a scene. He actually went to, he went and, and um, in to Greece, in, in Greece and, and uh, went to X Factor. He was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, I remember that. Us. So I mean, that was all a product. Look about that was all a product of what we were doing. Like, yeah, people were out there. But th this is this is what I'm saying. It was like we're all a group of friends, but how many talented people were in that one group? You know yeah. what I mean? Like boss, I'll tell you, we went. I remember we would go to New York and like you know everybody's always intimidated. Oh, New York is like you know they would be like, oh, you're from Boston. What do you know? I'm like, no, man, like. And then you tell them who you were and they listen to your stuff. They're like, well, yeah, all right. That's, you're, you're, you're pretty good. You know, like, so. To, to hey, we, we, were, we were Bostonians and we were doing parties in New York. So yeah. it's like, think <laughs> about that. Exactly. So like these, so I mean, you, we always would, I know we always would, would, would have that conversation with them and they wouldn't take us seriously. But once they knew who we were and they listened to our stuff, they're like, all right, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so it was, it, it was, it was a journey, man. Like we, I, I, we were talking to before, I think we spoke, to before like we would go to new york we go to uh astoria and like people would know us out of nowhere they're like oh thriller oh you know greco it's like like what the, like you know, we went to philly yeah uh, we dj down there we got a great reception. philly like, philly you're very well known in philly i'll tell you that right now <laughs> yeah you know what you know what it is man like i never we went i, I know you went, went down there, we went down there and we, we played our music i think I, I i um my mixes and stuff i connected with a lot of people like a lot of people that we're in my mentality where they wanted to hear like mashups of like, or like just wanted to hear that mix of like American music, the hip hop, that reggaeton, you know, the Latin music mixed with the Greek music because, because no, in essence, that's what we are. We're, we're, we're in America. We're a mix of two cultures, you know? Yeah. Right. And I think the way that, I, that when I came out with these mashups and these remixes and even the mix CDs where I'm mixing both genres, it's like a reflection of us, of like me, like, yeah. you know, I'm not Greek. I'm not American. I'm like Greek American. Like, so, you know, good point. Yeah. Well, you know, so, so yeah. I think with it, when I, when I came out with the music, people were like, people attached themselves to that. They're like, wow, I can't believe you just, you know, you've been 50 cent with, with, uh, with, uh, with Van D. Like, how did you do that? That's awesome. So Dude, yeah. I, I, I love hearing it. I love hearing all these stories. I mean, we, we've done the group uh, DJ yeah. thing and, you know, I love that. I love listening to the individuals. Uh, I love everybody's uh, point of view on the scene. I love everybody's uh, memories of the scene. And you know what? Fine. Let's let's stop talking about the past. But the future's coming too, and you're still doing it. We're gonna do more stuff together. You're gonna do stuff on your own. We're gonna do stuff together. It's it's just gonna keep going. So yeah, you know, look, the passion the passion's there, and I mean you and, and obviously I, I still have it, and you guys have it too. Like you guys have, and I and that's why I really want to thank you guys because you guys are building that platform like for for people like me to be heard. Like and that's what I need. Like I can only do so much, and I learned that early my early days. Like every time I that I the most I got most popular or people to hear my stuff is when I align myself with with Sigma to do a Greek nights, or we took the hip hop, Greek hip hop and the line, we worked as a group, or I got my mixes to you, to you when you had your old website and, and you got it out there. That a lone wolf is, it's tough. Like you, you can push your music out, but if when you start, when you have a team assembled, I think right. you can make waves and you guys, you guys always help provide with that. Always were very um, and a, and, supportive too, you know? And, and our end, yeah. It works the same way on our end. We need individuals like yourself to keep our platforms running, yeah. interesting, and it's, keeping our audience together. It's it's like a symbiotic relationship. You put out great content. We have a platform. Without content, there's no platform. Without a platform, it's hard to get content out. So it works yeah. well together. Yeah, and it's really great. I think I think a, a lot of times, um, you know, people might, uh, you know, they don't. They don't work well together and you know they get a lot of egos but you you really i learned that early in that in the game that gets really gets you nowhere and you know yeah, you yeah. Have to no you can't things. you can't you 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 have to be cool with people because you never know who is gonna do something great or who's gonna help you or you, you never know and it's just it's better to not cut people out and burn bridges than to you know it, it's just it's just better to be together and, yeah. and our group that we're talking about all this time, 
imagine like nobody liked each other or nobody worked together. Imagine what the scene would be like. The scene would be totally different. There would have been, there wouldn't have been a scene. No, yeah, we would we would have been uh, we would have had each other's strokes, and it, it worked well. I think, I mean, probably the best times I had DJing were at those big Greek nights. Like, yeah. I was, you know, I went from I went from a a, a a little kid going into these big Greek nights as you know intimidated and like, wow, I can't believe this, and then to like actually being behind the booth and DJing and like. Well, you know, on 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 the on the Boston Greeks uh, website, you know, we didn't get to the Sigma times yet with the picture galleries. But all you young, younger people out there, wait till we get to those photo galleries and just like look at these guys and look at the crowd that they had and look at like what's going on. I think I have video clips, too, so you could actually hear. Yeah. It, it, it's amazing. It's amazing that we were part of that. And, and yeah, I mean, it was it was it was nice. It was five, six hundred people there. It was overflowing. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah. it was it was insanity. I was like, I mean, you couldn't. I mean, the DJ booth was like there was 20 people in DJ booth. I'm trying to spin it like this. <laughs> like, uh, uh, <laughs> good times. It, good was, it was it was a lot. It was a lot of Greek nights back then, too. Like it was, they're all built up to each other. I know uh, Foti had a very successful uh, Greek uh, night going on at, at, at his when he was doing the promotion, you know, all those nights, they all, you know, they all led up to each other, you know? Right, yeah. right. I mean, Absolutely. we all fed off of each other. Uh, we all created that buzz and energy in the city. Um, and to your point too, as you know, Greeks in Boston, I don't know any other city, but maybe outside of New York, but at that time, if you, you can really think about it, there was Greek nights going on every week. Wednesday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Yeah. And then there was these one-offs on the weekends, long weekends, holidays. Yeah. Um, we were just filled with events. There was always something to go to. Always. Yeah, and I think, you know, and I'll tell you, that's that's the pro that's probably the environment where I came from and where I came out with that when I was, we became one of my biggest influences is that scene, is that that connection with other Greeks in Massachusetts. And then, and then becomes, you know, when you throw the internet in there, it's now we're connected Whoa. with Greeks all over the world, you know? Yeah. So, it was like, well, look, we're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, now we're, we're still kind of in the throes of a pandemic, but you know, once that stuff starts to subside, we're going to get back into this stuff. We're going to start doing events. We're going to start doing concerts. Uh, we got the platform. We got the, the talent. We got, we, everything is there. We, we have the perfect recipe. So hmm. we're going to get back to it. That's, That's it. it. That's it. So um, to Arthur's point, um, discussing about a possible project coming up soon uh, for those that are listening to this episode in this segment um, just stay tuned to our social media because we will be rolling out something very soon all right yeah and uh, I'm, I'm i'm gonna be getting my arsenal of greek music ready to make sure you hear things you've never heard before so oh man that's awesome i'm so excited about this i'm we'll, excited we'll make I, I have I, like I have that energy. I want to put stuff out there too. So I, it's it'll be a good 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 uh, good show. We put We're gonna do it. We're doing in the, it. In the meantime, uh, Thriller, can you let our audience know uh, for those that have been listening about what you do and maybe your services, uh, how can they find out more information about? Yeah. So the best thing you can do is you go to um, to www.djthriller.com. So there you can uh, book me. I do weddings, uh, Greek events, baptisms, and whatnot non-greek stuff too also do lighting and um and other different event services if you go on there um if you want to listen to my music you go to um the best would be go to my soundcloud so it's um soundcloud.com slash thriller t-h-r-i-l-l-a uh, music and then on instagram so it's uh, dj thriller t-h-r-i-l-l-a underscore official and that's the uh the, um, awesome. Instagram. You can find me there. We, yeah, I, I'm going to link to all those yeah, as well. So, there. so yeah, so it, uh, just stay on the lookout for that. And uh, you know what, guys, uh, this was awesome uh, listening oh, you, to you. You, you forgot to, you, I forgot one last story that I, I needed to tell you. Get okay. it out. It was the time when the MTV called me. I don't even know if what? It was, oh. Yeah. It was, and it's happened recently. It was three years ago, no, two years ago. I got a I got a call on my phone. I just want to throw it out there because I, I, I it was almost an amazing story that I, I never really tell to anybody. But I was I, I thought it was a spam call. I didn't answer it. I get the message. I go to my message. I listen to it. And it's like hell hello. And I actually say this message. It's like hello. This is uh, so and so from MTV. 
we're casting a new show. Uh, we're looking for a Greek DJ. And what? I'm like, I'm like, okay, yeah, right. You're full of crap. So, <laughs> anyways, so I go to, uh, I go to my wife. I'm like, I think MTV just called. He's like, what? I'm like, all right. <laughs> Well, I go outside. I'm like, let me call them back. I call them back. I'm like, yeah, this is Arthur. It's like, oh, this is DJ Thriller. I'm like, yeah. She goes, yeah, we're, we're filming a new show in, in uh, Mykonos. We're looking for a Greek DJ. We're going to be Lindsay Lohan's uh, show. Um, what? Mykonos. And we're looking for someone. I'm like, well, how did you find me? She's like, how do I not find you? You're everywhere. I, type, <laughs> I go, you, I, I hear your music. Um, you know, I had my people in my office listen to my music. And they're they like, we want you on there. And I'm like, I'm like, look, unfortunately, my wife is pregnant. And like ready to have like and and uh, we we'll having a baby oh, soon. I go it was five years ago. I would have been there. I go. But, oh man! But uh, you know, I would have been like the Polly B of Greek Greek DJs and stuff like that. That um, would have been awesome, man. Yeah. So I always tell people this story. It was like so, it was almost a validation of like all this hard work that I put out. I'm like finally. I'm like not that I. It wouldn't have been great to go, but it was almost to the point of like. All right, they called me. I'm like, oh well, at least they found me somehow. I'm like, how the hell did they even find me? Like, it was, that's but awesome. it was all the hard work that I put myself out there on, on yeah. the internet. That's a that's testament, awesome. a testament to you. Yeah, so I was always tell people like that. I'm like, I got so I ended up um, telling them I, I obviously I can't so, do it, and you know, I can maybe help you find somebody else. And um, they ended up. I don't even think they ended up um, getting uh, a DJ. They went a different direction where they got like you know some so, uh, Greek, Greeks that looked like they were from Jersey Shore. <laughs> So like the moral to your story right there, Arthur, is answer your phone. Yes. <laughs> if the phone looks like, if it looks like a crazy phone, just answer it. You know, I almost missed it. I, I would have never even got it. I, I almost deleted the message too. I would have never known. And I was like, I was like, geez, I ended up saving the message on my phone. I'm like, listen. Well, I, 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 not, not to go off a story, too many stories, but uh, I think Ari has a story that's almost going to top that. No, it, it doesn't top that. But I think it, it does. When we had when we had all those battles back in the day between promoters and all the bull crap, and I, they used to drive me crazy. I never answered my phone. I, I would never answer my phone. So at one point I got a phone call and a message, but I didn't check it for like a week. And when I finally checked it, it was a producer for Oprah Winfrey asking me yeah. to go on the show because we promoted uh, my big fact week wedding before it went into wide release. And I was like, no. And I called back and they're like, oh, sorry, we already booked the show. <laughs> so, this yeah. is the same, same exact feeling I'm like, <laughs> answer your phone that's it like, i was like why didn't i answer that oh yeah man. it's almost you almost to the point of like like now now it makes you all like shell shocked you're like all right i'm picking this picking my phone up. <laughs> I'm like no i don't want no car insurance no car well reward. you know that that was pretty recent for you i mean we're, for me we're talking like yeah. uh 15 years ago nobody's no, calling I mean, me now was, I, mean, was, <laughs> I ended up calling i called them back it was a, the, 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 uh, a casting call company I was like, well, you know, you guys, because I work the, that that same group that I work with, the dance group, they actually dance on MTV, and I did music for them. Yeah. So I was like, look, I go, I, I got, I did some stuff for you guys before, but they were like, they're like, I want to keep my name on file. I was like, I just I'm like, this is like, because you know, a young kid might not know what MTV is today, but in our generation, oh, MTV yeah. was like, like the, 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 it was like your life, and especially mine, yeah, as, yeah. As, as as because right. I do what I do. I'm like, Absolutely. it was, it was ginormous. Now it's, it's just reality show crap. Yeah, but back then, man, you say MTV. Back then, it was like, everything. Yeah, it was everything in the world. So I, our, our I, whole, our I, whole, like, uh, our whole culture was uh, molded yeah. by MTV back then. Yeah, it was, it was, the, it was as big as bigger than Facebook back then. It was, yeah. just that, it was that much. So when I got that call, I was like, wow. I go, out of everybody in the whole country, they found me. I go, I must have done something right. I told my parents, I'm like, you were laughing at me in the basement. Bravo, and, bravo, bravo. I, I go, listen, listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, then, this was obviously awesome. obviously obviously we had our kids i have a kid and stuff and I, you know, obviously that was a different joy and it was obviously i wasn't gonna miss the, any part of that but um you know it was just good to get to that point i think yeah yeah definitely definitely awesome well, this is awesome this is great right, yeah i'll let you get thanks for having me guys and uh well i look forward to our new venture Maybe yes this, this could be the the genesis of this of this new venture so, so yes so so we want to thank uh arthur marcos aka dj thriller we're gonna have all his information uh linked up in the notes and we want to thank you man i want to thank you uh as a guest uh for all the stories and you know for bringing back some good memories for me and and i can't wait to to do everything that we're gonna do and i can't wait to see or actually i can't wait to hear all the stuff that you're gonna be doing so thanks again arthur we appreciate right. your time 40 thank you thank you we guys 
everybody out there, thank you for watching and listening. Um, this was great. And we will see you guys next episode. Check the notes for all the info and we'll see you next time. Take Bye -bye. care. Man.